All right, y'all. Now on the farm today, we're picking up some steps for our mobile home so we can pass inspection. And uh, we're gonna get these uh, concrete steps loaded up. Eventually, I'm gonna build a deck on the back. But for now, so we can go ahead and pass inspection to get power. I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, concrete steps here. Uh, so yeah, they're gonna get us loaded up now. And then we'll head on back to the farm. We're probably gonna get, get started working on some fencing today. <laughs> there you go. And uh, so let's get loaded up and let's see if we can uh, get these steps loaded so we can pass inspection. Alright y'all, we're just ripping and rolling today. Don't have time to stop and talk too much and take too much video. Uh, maybe once Megan and the boys get back, they'll take a little video for us. But uh, we out here working on fencing now. We got our steps picked up. And I'm going to take y'all down in here and show y'all who I got working with me today. Alright, I got my worker here today <laughs> working with me. Putting in T-Post cl uh, clamps. Connecting the fence to it for us. Say hey to everybody on YouTube, mama. Hello. Alright. I know y'all love to see who I call grandma, but it's my mama, it's the boy's grandma. But if I call her mama, the boys be calling her mama. <laughs> so I had to say grandma. But uh, grandma's down here, my mama's down here working on helping us with the fencing. Getting these, uh, the fence attached to the T-posts. And uh, we're just putting in these little clips here. Putting in four on each post. And she's back here working on that. And I'm gonna be at the top of the hill over here on the other side of the fence line, stretching more fence. So we're trying to get this fence taken care of, y'all. We want to get it done like it has to be done by the end of this week. Like it's not, not an option. So I'm working up from sun up to sundown to get this fence done. So I'm going to get to work, y'all. I'm going to just pick y'all up a little bit later and I'll uh, just show y'all when the progress is, uh, when progress has happened. That should have been on camera. It's hard, it's hard to hold this coffee cup with my left hand. <laughs> but I can't hold a camera with my right, with my left hand either. Why do they make left hands? Oh, it's IG Farms. It's all about God. <clears throat> We're just out here drinking coffee and our cool IAG Farm t-shirts. <laughs> Walking around this morning. And uh, we figured we'd do a property update if we can get across this mud. We got mud everywhere. That's that's the first update. There's <laughs> mud everywhere. The mud has taken over. And we're muddy. The boys are muddy. The Every barn is muddy. Is the muddy. camper is muddy. Camp is muddy. Everywhere you go, there's mud. You yeah. really just oops, oops, stick. Uh, you really just can't get oh you know, speaking of sticks, let's just start there. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's 
so we just kicked a stick and like panicked. Mm -hmm. Why did we do that? <laughs> because I saw a copperhead. <laughs> oh yeah, I was doing some dirt work, trying to fill in some spots, you know, just while everything was already dirty and muddy and dug up. And I had a, a big pile of dirt that I had sitting off in the woods mm -hmm. and I was using it to fill some holes in. And uh, I think I scooped up a copperhead and, and I didn't know because uh, I parked the tractor and I got done working with the dirt. And I went to the store to pick up some some some, some supplies or whatever. And uh, you know, Megan walked up on the tractor over there. Mm -hmm. As you see where the tractor's parked it over there to feed the pigs, you know, by the pig pen. And she saw a copperhead just slid them away just as slowly. <laughs> and I think what happened is is that that copperhead was hanging on to the tractor. I think I scooped him up mm -hmm. in his habitat. And he was just hanging on to the tractor waiting until I, I stopped. And after I stopped, he just was kind of trying to sneak away. And yeah. Megan just so happened to walk up on walk him. Walk on him, yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, I have never seen a copperhead that wasn't in like a pile of, of leaves mm -hmm. or under a piece of tin or something like that. And I was like, why is it just out in the open? Yeah. And I would have noticed it if Gideon hadn't have been looking at it like so Gideon his attention was on it like mm -hmm. immediately and I was like looking because I'm like what is Gideon looking at and when I looked at what Gideon was looking at I saw that snake the big long and has a leaf shaped pattern I don't even like know the names of the snakes mm -hmm. but I know like what the poisonous ones look like yeah. so I knew it was poisonous so I called him I was like what's the snake with the leaf pattern <laughs> the Hershey's kisses <laughs> And he was like, that's a copperhead. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. I knew it was a, a bad, uh, like a poisonous one. Yeah, you just, you, you just look at him and tell. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I was filling in these uh, little valleys and uh, little holes you know, in our front yard here. And, uh, like I said, I think I scooped them up. And yeah. Once I parked the tractor right there. I think he just was kind of trying to slither away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he, he must have been injured because I'll show you all the video here. But uh, he must have been injured because he was moving too slow. Yeah, Usually so. copperheads move fast. Yeah. The only snake that I've seen move slow like that is a water moccasin. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're so big and fat. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. mm -hmm. So Gideon was literally herding him away from me. Because he was like nipping at him, like going at him a little bit. And the snake would start to slither away as mm -hmm. he was like you know ushering him <laughs> further and further out away from me so and i usually kill poisonous snakes when they come in our area i don't go hunting them you know as long as they stay in their natural habitat i let them survive and let them live because they're a part of the ecosystem you know so i know they have a place to mm -hmm. eat mice and all type of things like that right. get across this mud but when they come in our environment you know in the boys play area yeah. i go ahead and take them out but I wasn't here, you know, and it was just Megan here. And uh, she was sitting there recording the snake and asking me, like, what type of snake is this? And I'm on the phone trying to rush and get here speeding on the highway with a trailer behind me. And uh, I told her, I said, you should have shot it. You should have shot that snake because <laughs> he was right there. And uh, Megan is a, is a certified pistol handler, gun handler. <laughs> Not certified, but uh, she's the one that, you know, uh, shoots things this around here animals dispatches yeah. our animals mm -hmm. but it's yeah. just hard because i can't touch the guns you know i'm not like a we're gonna go get the 22 type oh of yeah person. That's, that's what my mama said she said if she can shoot a, a pig and when y'all butchering them you know she can show up shoot a snake <laughs> yeah I, mm -hmm. I get so nervous uh right before butcher day like it takes and i know when butcher day is coming usually so it takes me a while to work up to that so when i see something like that day it's like oh, i don't know what to do but um yeah so i i just gotta get better i know it's important if there's a snake in our area because our boys are so young you know i don't know if they could just handle a snake bite like that and we live y'all like hours away from um you know hospital stuff like that you know at least 30 minutes away in vicksburg you know and about an hour away in jackson so, you know, we just want to be snake aware and be vigilant. That's why Tim keeps the grass cut. We have low, uh, high uh, ground areas with low grass. Yeah, well, usually where the, the snakes don't, the snakes play. usually don't come into that area, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we, I don't think we've seen not one snake on the high ground in that area where the boys play it, you know, so far. We've seen some in the area to get a little too close that mm -hmm. I take out, but uh, none have actually been, you know, in that area. We did see snakes, see that snake skin that one time yeah. in, in the boys' play area. Yeah, but, I think uh, this walkway, along this walkway, it seems like snakes are like, we're seeing them more and more along this walking path, mm -hmm. but not in, you know, our area, which is just over from that. So... Yeah, we're just going to have to be more vigilant and be snake aware. And I guess I'm going to have to get used to the 22. I guess y'all might see me carrying. I have a little holster. 
<laughs> y'all might see me carrying it around because you can't really just like run and go mm -hmm. get it. Like if I ran and went and got the 22, by the time I got back, who knows where the snake was. She talking been. about a 22, y'all. I'm, I'm finna buy her a shotgun <laughs> <laughs> and a nine millimeter I, I, with I, an AK-47 on would've the been, side. <laughs> would have been better just grabbing a shovel, which, you know, is a shovel nearby, but... Like then you have to kind of like hand to hand yeah. combat, and that that's why I step in it because yeah. uh you know I'm, I I made some mistakes when I was younger, and so I you know I can't have firearms, I can't be in possession of them. So Megan possesses all the firearms on the farm because you can't have a farm without firearms. Like yeah. they it's like firearms on a farm or firearms and living in the country go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Cause we, we we have bears out here, wild alligators, hogs, alligators. Wild, yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, man, it, it, yeah. it's so many things that can pose a threat, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, like I say, we, we we live in a community with all those things. Yeah. You know? they, they they stay in their lane. But we we, we actually the time, they're staying in their lane. Tell them about the coyote violence. that we saw the other day. Which one? Which time? She, she said, which one? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we were looking. Time. We showed y'all on oh, one of the videos. When video. they grabbed the geese. Exactly. Okay, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, we showed y'all some of the wild geese that come around, and uh, they come around to the ponds in the area every year. And uh, we were looking at some wild geese on our neighbor's pond, mm -hmm. and we were like, oh, look at the geese, look at the geese. And then we saw this this deer-looking, dog-looking thing running, you know, oh. creeping out of the woods. <laughs> and they grabbed the geese and ran back in the yeah. woods, and we were like, yeah, that was a coyote. Yeah, it just <laughs> Broad daylight. was gone. Mm -hmm. We were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm most, of, yeah, sure. most of the time. She didn't want any of y'all, but she can't turn it down on, on camera. Y'all see she don't I have her cup. I make my own cup. She made mine, though. Yeah. But I made his. Y'all, I can't really tolerate coffee like that every mm -hmm. day. You know, I, I drink tea sometimes. But, um, yeah, coffee is just hard on my stomach. So. Yeah. <laughs> he drinks the coffee That's right. every day. I don't. <laughs> not every day. We're walking down our amazing driveway here. Watching out for snakes at the same time. Mm -hmm. it actually, it was a thunderstorm, like a serious storm. Yeah. Uh, last mm -hmm. night. Yesterday, and uh, the creek was running good, but it was thundering so bad. I didn't want to walk all the way down here and uh, get struck by lightning. Mm -hmm. But the driveway seems to be holding up pretty good. I'm gonna turn y'all around, and let y'all just see what we see. Yeah, so as you can see, the driveway is holding up pretty good. We've been rolling over it, packing it down, and uh, the goal with this gravel because it's, it's kind of big, you know, and the boys they can't really ride their bikes on it. So they have a little trail on the side. They pretty much ride the water line. <laughs> well, we covered the water line up it. That's their bike trail now. Because uh, the, the, the driveway isn't packed down good enough yet. But uh, it's doing good. And eventually, once it gets packed down, after we drive over for about a year or so, uh, we'll be able to bring in some smaller rock. You know, something that's, that the boys can ride their bikes on. And it's, you know, just a little bit smaller. But the creek is still running just a little bit over here. Nothing like it was yesterday. Still got a little bit of flow there. But it seems to be holding up pretty good so far, cause uh, we I did one one video walk and talk during the rain where the rain the water was like overflowing the road right here, mm -hmm. and what I did was I built up this little section here with dirt and I dug the dug a ditch down over on the side and that seems to be holding up pretty good. Let's see what it's looking like over here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some of these sticks out of the. Uh... <laughs> out of the creek for you but i have to be careful because this is our water moccasin oh area it's territory mm -hmm. like i said we we, we know the areas where the mm -hmm. certain types of snakes, snakes are. are you know anywhere around the woods and around leaves and tin that's copperhead territory mm -hmm. and down here by the creek water moccasin territory mm -hmm. and it's just black races all over we're not really worried about those and king snakes yeah. you know th those are our friends you welcome those mm -hmm. snakes. yep I guess we'll walk on down and see what the pond is looking like. Yeah, probably high again. Mm -hmm. Take a look at our fencing. Everything is looking good. Can't wait for all of this this mud to for grass to grow over top of it. Yeah, for it to settle and lock in. Mm -hmm. We have one more um, big uh, rut worthy project. Oh for yeah, now. the That's power the lines is with mm -hmm. the energy, the power line. Um, People are going to come in and put in poles and drop trees and, you know, so they're going to bring in heavy equipment, which will create more ruts. Um, but, you know, this is one more thing and those things should be happening soon, we hope. But, um, yeah, so I'm ready <laughs> to get that done so the, the property can start to lock in. Yeah, you know? get all the grass growing back, mm -hmm. get rid of erosion. 
Because if the grass doesn't, if it rains too much and we have to bring in too much more equipment, we're going to have to put in some, some millet, millet or something. Yeah. Something to keep the ground from, from washing so bad. Because mm -hmm. all of our dirt is just flowing down in the creek now. Oh, one thing I did want to ask y'all. So, if anyone has tips on maintaining a gravel driveway, like what to do to keep the weeds out, things like that. Yeah, naturally. You naturally, mm -hmm. drop those in the comments so mm -hmm. we can depend on some of y'all's wisdom because we know yeah. you know y'all out there have a lot of wisdom to share with us so we appreciate y'all's comments we do look at them so keep them coming that's right yeah because we don't want to have to spray a herbicide on the mm -hmm. driveway because the grass is growing in already you can see it yeah and we wanted to stay nice without any grass in it so uh yeah y'all have any ideas shoot them down in the comment section below or email us i email email all of our, our information is in the uh, description box above you know anytime you see because even if you see our name or something like that or our, 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 our picture in the comment section asking you to text us or something like that that's not no. us those are the scammers they they, they they come up with new scams you know every video seems like sometimes they steal our profile picture sometimes they, they steal our name mm -hmm. they try to make it seem like it's us but it's not actually us and they try to get you to like text and do all this yeah, and all download this and download the app do it. don't do don't it don't click on it <laughs> don't do it don't do it like i said all of our information is in the description box above so y'all can uh, contact us you know through that through the email and things like that mm -hmm. Take a look at this pond, and I guess we'll take a look at the fencing because I think on the fencing video we kind of cut y'all off <laughs> because we were so tired. We literally <laughs> we worked, worked all so night. Dark. Yeah, man, for real. Past dark in yeah. the dark. <laughs> yeah, lost my fencing pliers. I've been yeah. fussing. I, who, who did I fire? I think I fired Tim Jr. <laughs> y'all gonna realize that's one of my things that I do. I, I think I fired my mama yesterday. <laughs> Something is you just. Have to excuse him. We all look You're over fired. him. We all look over him. Y'all better watch out. I might fire one of y'all. Y'all keep on. Fire everybody in the family. For real. I hire him back though. Because I realize I can't do what needs to be done without him. Because I fired the boys. Like for real. I fired the boys from doing uh, farm chores with me. Because they were like playing and acting crazy and distracting me. And then I realized that, hey, I need these people. <laughs> for real. It's like I have to fill up the animal waters, like go get a bucket, like run my own Do errands. Everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm I had to hire him back. He appreciates them. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need that. You know, you don't realize what you have until mm -hmm. it's gone. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Man, these bears are looking so good. Let me let y'all see these bears. Yeah, we have like a, a natural orchard here, berry orchard. I don't know if y'all can see, but there's a bunch of red ones, but you can see the, the blue ones that have started to pop out. And uh, they're everywhere along this whole pond dam here. And they just grow naturally. I need to get the boys to start coming out. And picking yeah, them. picking them just every day. Because of uh, the blue ones that are blue today, the animals are going to eat them eat tonight. Them some, yeah. <laughs> and then more are going to become blue, but yeah. <laughs> we need to start building up a, you we'll know. Let them walk down and pick some. Mm -hmm. Find a little container that I can keep them in and yep. you know, keep picking them. It's looking good. Yeah, that bush was standing straight up right there, but I see the rain kind of pushed it down. But as soon as the sun come out, it'll stand back up. Mm -hmm. That's the one I was really depending on. <laughs> the one that the dogs can't and the animals can't get to. <laughs> yep. Vincent is looking good. We got to get in here and uh, tie in. That's what my mom was working on yesterday <laughs> before I fired her. <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, but she, she she was putting the fencing too low, and uh, she she knows I'm just joking. But she was putting the fencing too low, and uh, we needed to be at least six inches off the ground. And I told her, I said, if you put it right on the ground, you know, the the fencing is gonna gonna rust away. And this fencing costs like four hundred and fifty dollars a roll. You know, it's crazy, but it's, it's it's the fencing that we need with the right size squares because uh, these this is sheep and goat fencing, and it keeps it to the point to where uh you know the sheep can't get their heads in and get their horns stuck. And the fencing. Yeah, that's super important. It's, it's super important. It's also good for our pigs too, because if we ever want our pigs to like feral out in pasture, when you have those baby animals, they can step right through the cattle fence. Yep. They just mm -hmm. walk right through, and they go in and they go out. So, um, yeah. So this really is the fencing, the the size fencing with the squares that we need for our farm. Mm -hmm. Good fences make good neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> make good yeah. animals uh, keepers. <laughs> Keeper <too>. ends, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. right. So, 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 so your your peas are not in your neighbor's garden when you look up. That's right. Good fences <laughs> make good pastures. Because y'all exactly for real. Y'all see that we have electric fence, and we do use electric fence. And our plan is to make cross fencing because we're gonna have this whole three acre section fenced off 
And then, but get, get, get. They eat my bears. Yeah, dogs eating yeah, bears. They eat like them too. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna have this whole three acre section here fenced off. And uh, we're gonna have cross fencing. And we're thinking about doing a cross fencing with electric fence. And, uh, you know, we learned that, you know, along the way, you know, from rotating animals on pasture without solid perimeter fence, that uh, you need perimeter fence. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, electric fence is good, but sometimes animals get, animals get out. And uh, even if they don't get out, like just having a spot to train them at, you know, because when you go buy animals, that's you know, right. uh, they might not be trained up to electric fence. Mm -hmm. And so you need some solid perimeter fence to put on the outside of this electric yeah. fence to train your animals up, mm -hmm. you know. And then that, that, that kind of puts you in control. Mm -hmm. It's like Megan said, good fences make good pastors. That's right. <laughs> For real. You said pastors, right? Not pastures. <laughs> pastors. That's like, right. As in the person that's yes. keeping and taking animals. care that's of the animals. That's what I thought animals. you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I don't know if you all know or not, but the type of farming that we do is actually called pastoral farming. Mm -hmm. You know, when you raise animals, you know, when you focus on raising animals and people, you know, because uh, we always talk about how our ultimate goal is not just to cultivate and develop animals or crops. Our ultimate goal is to cultivate and develop people. You know, the animals and the crops are just a liaison or just an in-between to get us to the, to the ultimate goal, you know, of discipling people. You know, blessing people. And there's a spiritual principle in that as well. When you talk about good fences make good pastors or good shepherds, mm -hmm. what you do, you set a boundary for your flock. Yeah. In order to keep them safe. Safe, that's right. You know, and that's what the Lord does for us. He gives us, you know, these principles, these boundaries, these, you know, things that we're, we're supposed to stay inside of or under. And those things keep us safe from the enemy, keep us protected, mm -hmm. keep us, you know, where we need to be to be fruitful. Yep. You know, so th there's a lot of spiritual principles that we learn as we pastor or shepherd our animals. Those things apply to us and, and the people that we, you know, are given to pastor or shepherd. Yep. Yeah, also just another thing that the Lord is teaching us with the, the fencing with me at least or just with the farm is like I'm trying to learn prudence mm -hmm. and basically what that means is you know being able to foresee and prepare for the future because I'm not very prudent you know a lot of times it's kind of like okay gotta figure this out gotta get gotta do my best gotta get through you know this day um, because you know we have a lot of responsibilities um, just in life you know i'm sure y'all understand that and um but not just thinking about today and getting through the day but being prudent and preparing for the future and with this farm it's, i'm really seeing the value of prudence and having a plan and having a vision everything that we're doing now on this farm is literally years of planning you know years in the making you know and the, the vision that the Lord gave us years ago is just for such a time as this. So don't think this all just happened overnight. <laughs> right. You know, and let that encourage you with the visions that the Lord may be giving you that are years away from manifesting. But the Lord is so faithful over those things. And, you know, just be prudent, you know, and prepare now for those days to come. That's right. That's right. Yeah, just talking, I'm just looking around at the storm damage. See a couple little limbs down, but nothing major. Let's walk over here and look at this fencing over here. I want to show y'all how high the fence is before we, you know, pull it down and attach it to the T post. Mm -hmm. Because we have some hilly terrain out here. And uh, okay, I watch out for snakes in this area. This is the area where we've seen snakes before. Yeah. On this hill above the pond. It's a lot of brush that like yeah. to hide out mm -hmm. in here. A lot of holes. Yeah. <clears throat> But uh, it's on, on hilly terrain, it's a little bit more difficult to do your fencing, mm -hmm. but not impossible, you know. Just because it's difficult don't mean that we have to whine about it or complain about it. <laughs> Just got to get her done. That's it. <laughs> T-shirt coming soon <laughs> from one of our subscribers because we're, like, uh, we're so busy, we don't have enough time to even worry about all that type of stuff right now. Eventually, we might, you know, launch a T-shirt line and all that type of stuff. But uh, right now, we're just focused on doing what the lord wants us to do right now you know we never it, it never was our goal to have a successful youtube channel and all those type things mm -hmm. we, we were just being obedient to the lord you know he told us to start doing youtube we just started taking videos we didn't know that it was gonna you know blow up like it has but uh you know we're just trying to stay obedient and not focused on focus on the success that we've had but focus on our savior 
you know, the one that put us in position to have the success. Mm -hmm. yeah, let me turn y'all around let y'all see this fence. All right, so y'all can see how high it is here. Along this line, it's almost guaranteed we're going to come across a snake. But yeah, you can see right there, and it, it, it's been higher on, 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 on other areas, but Meg can walk over there and kind of show them how we get it down. <laughs> That's kind of a small step yeah. Might, might have to uh, take you to McDonald's and get you a couple of Big Macs. So did you step on on top of it, see if it come down. You might not have enough bricks in your pocket this morning. No, I don't. Can you get on it? Or is it too wobbly? It's not wobbly. Watch yourself, don't, don't let it, because it might, it might fall. The I can't get it off the step, away, so step away from the T-post. Like, go on another area. Like, go on down, because I don't want to slip down and then you bind your finger or something. Yeah, uh-huh. There you go. So y'all can see it's kind of coming down. She puts weight on it. And that's kind of how we get it down in some areas. You good. I don't want to hurt yourself. But uh, when it's high like this, usually we attach the tractor to it with, with that uh, fence stretcher. And just, you know, use the bucket of the tractor to, like, push down. And that gets it to, you know, go along with the lay of the land. Kind of like we did up there. But, yes, it's looking good, looking good. <clears throat> Walk y'all down here and show y'all this stretch over the pond. Yeah, as y'all saw in the last video, the, the property line goes over the pond a little bit here. So it's a beautiful thing. We get to share part of the pond with the neighbors. I love it. Yeah, the pond is looking amazing. It looks so big on camera. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm, I still remember when we first bought the property, when uh, you were in front of the pond with your hair frizzed all up <laughs> over your head. <laughs> Yeah, it came from uh, the city and brought me yeah. some cold Wendy's and McDonald's or whatever yeah. it was. We, we didn't know how far it was out here back then. We didn't. I didn't know how far I was driving that mm -hmm. day. You know, it was yeah. our first time really stepping foot, setting foot on the property and mm -hmm. getting uh, our survey done. So yep. that was an exciting time. It That's really right. was. Let me back find that picture and, and link it in here <laughs> <laughs> when you're standing in front of the pond so happy. Had, had your hands thrown in there. Yeah, I think I was pregnant, too. You were always pregnant back then. For real. <laughs> we, th we thought we were going to have 12 kids back then, but uh, you had to have those C-sections. Mm -hmm. So Megan had uh, three C-sections. She had a C-section with Tim Jr. first. Tim messed us up first, and then, then it flowed on down to the rest of everybody. <laughs> Tim was something else. Because you remember, uh, t t tell the story. Let let's walk this way. I'm not wake nobody up. But I want you to tell the story. We're going to walk over here. I'm going to get you to tell the story about Tim Jr. Because I think that's important for people to know and understand. It's so many testimonies. <clears throat> but uh, we're going to walk over this way, a little bit away from the property line, so we don't wake nobody up. <laughs> and then tell y'all the story about Tim Jr.'s birth, the miracle. So the story with Tim Jr., um, when he was born, you know, not born, but before he was born, we were pregnant with him. I actually, you know, thought, we thought, you know, and for all intents and purposes, had a miscarriage, you know, like we were uh, bleeding. We went to the doctor and, you know, I saw the screen where you had a dot and then the dot was missing and it was just a miracle. But, you know, I still began growing, gaining weight. And I was like, oh, you know, I just, you know, probably am eating too much and my hormones hadn't balanced out yet. So, yeah. you know, I'm just still, you know, a little bit dumpy, gaining <laughs> weight. And, um, I started to feel flutters in my stomach and I was thinking, this is just strange, you know, but I didn't want to hope. So I was just like, maybe it was gas, you know, and the Lord had actually given us some scriptures to pray over our family <clears throat> and that, you know, it was, you know, serve the Lord and his blessings will be on your food and water and none shall be barren or miscarried among you. And I had been praying that. And so it was really, really hard. When, you know, I went to the doctor and learned that I had a miscarriage. And I just remember going, Lord, like, you asked me to pray this over my family. This is your word. And I was like, you are going to have to help me with this. <laughs> this happened to me. Like, you're going to have to help me. And I heard so clearly the voice of the Lord say to me, daughter, I love you. And that was his response. And... I felt that love just shower over me. I was laying in the bed praying, and I felt his love just shower over me, cover my whole body. And I was like, okay, Lord, 
you know if you love me i trust you i and i knew that i just i just left it at his hands left it in his at his feet left it in his hands and i just let you know let it go I, and i was healed from that or whatever and um five months later finally i was like i need to go to the doctor you know and we found out that we literally were five months pregnant <laughs> so that's that now, now, let me just put it in perspective because that's five months after the hemorrhaging and all mm -hmm. of the blood and all of the miscarriage mm -hmm. type stuff and the diagnosis of the miscarriage mm -hmm. and they looked in there and there was nothing in there and they told us you know the doctor at the time <clears throat> the uh, what is it the OBGYN at the time told us you know to wear protection you know when intercourse don't get, don't get pregnant again. right away so they can you know know when the cycle comes and all that type of stuff and so for about two months you know, maybe a month and a half or something like that. You know, we made sure that we, we, we did like they asked us to do, you know, with protection and all those type of things. So there was no way, <laughs> you know, because uh, somebody said, maybe I got pregnant again. It's like, no, there's no way that we could have got pregnant again. You know, I guess it could have been a small possibility. But, you know, with the things that we were doing, it just the Lord was just setting it up to like testify of how much a miracle it was going to be. Because five months after, you know, that. Uh, pronounced miscarriage we went to the doctor and uh they they actually uh you know because i think they did like the urine test first and they were like you're pregnant and so we're like okay okay cool cool how many months you know a month or two yeah, you know sorry. and uh they, they they pulled that little thing they put over your stomach you know when you're, you're early pregnant stages and uh they were like no nah, we need to uh do something like, else Whoa, right right <laughs> well no 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 what they did was they didn't do the stomach thing first they did the uh one that they you know that, yeah. penetrate into you you know because that's what they do in, in your early early pregnancy stages and then when they put it in there and she pulled it out real quick and she started panicking she was like hold up hold up <laughs> there's a baby in there you know we were like what's, what's, what's wrong with it you know what's wrong with the nurse and so she pulled out the thing they put over the stomach you know and then started doing it that way because that's what they do when you're later on into the pregnancy once the baby begins to grow right, so and she looked at that baby grown, and she said this baby is fully grown fully <laughs> developed she said this baby is about five months developed yeah. <laughs> you know Hands, feet, Look, arms. I, I think he was looking yeah, at us with, with with a thumbs up. Yeah, he, it was like he was peace. Yeah, it was a peace, peace sign. sign. Yeah, he was. Just, it, it's like when she did the sonogram. It was like he was in there throwing up peace. Like I'm still here, y'all. <laughs> you know, I'm good. God got me. Yeah. So it, it, it was a miracle, peace like a miracle. And then uh, that's why we talk about uh, Tim Jr. messed her up with the C-section because uh, he was so big and so strong. Like oh. Tim came out with a six-pack with abs, yeah. muscles. And he was holding his head, head up and standing up on his feet. Like, he wouldn't let you hold him like a baby. This. He wouldn't let you hold him like a baby. He would cry. He wants you to hold him like a man. Like He wanted to stand up on his feet, even though his legs were like, you know, bowed up and could barely stand up. Yeah. That's how he wanted to be. And he's been like that his whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, he's... Yeah, had, had headstrong. Headstrong. He's had two surgeries already, like major yes. surgeries. Oh, he, cause, cause, he's cause he's like a crazy man. He's like rough. He's surgery. rough. For real. <laughs> With jump off stuff, like, you know. I just have to tell this story because it's too funny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the doctor said, okay, it's going to take the child a while to rebound from the anesthesia. Oh, and yeah. They'll be droggy. And I was thinking, they said, don't let him walk. Don't let him get up. Don't let him move. I'm talking about TMJ in there. <laughs> he immediately, when he opens his eyes, he wakes up. The first thing he does is try to get up. Then he Jump starts up. to try to rip the IV Crying, out of his arm, yelling. thrashing his body around. Because they told us, they said, only one of you all can come back. So I said, we said, okay, send Megan back there. <laughs> you know, I look up, they're running out there. Uh, we need his dad. We need his dad. And it's like, I'm the only one that could go in and calm him down. For real. They, they, they were like trying to pity patty him and all these female like, nurses boy, you i'm like boy you better sit down <laughs> he's like yes sir <laughs> for real anything else y'all need me to do you know for real then they're trying to give him popsicles and stuff like this a man, he he not a man a you can't calm no man down no popsicles real, you need another man to <laughs> for real you need that boy's daddy <laughs> yeah it's, it's good funny. i love it i love it yeah it's been a fun walk y'all it's been a fun walk man we We've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed fellowshipping with you all. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to reading you all's comments, suggestions, answers to some of our questions. And uh, I think we're going to try to get back started on fencing today. It's been raining so much. Yes, you know, it's muddy and mucky. It must just be the Lord's will for me not to finish this fencing this week because <laughs> uh, he's in control of the rain. Mm -hmm.
But uh, we'll see. We'll see. If the sun comes out a little bit, it'll dry everything up to where I can stretch. Because I only have two more stretches left. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be done stretching fence and I can start putting up farm gates. But I, th but I think we're going to end today's video here, y'all. It's IAG Farms. It's all about God. We'll see y'all on the next one.